Hi, it's Samantha. Welcome to my channel. It's been a while since I posted a video and that's really because we've been traveling a lot this summer trying to get in all the fun summer activities. At this point my daughter is six months old and has been on 12 plane flights so I feel like we are not experts at flying with a young baby but we've done it a lot so I thought I would share my tips here. Obviously my experience with my baby, she's been six months and younger, so keep that in mind when you watch this video. I honestly think that traveling with a young baby is not actually as bad as a lot of people think that it is. I think people get really stressed and anxious about it, which is very understandable. You don't really know how your baby's going to react to the new situation and all the people and everything. You're kind of stuck in a plane and you can't leave, so if your baby starts crying it's gonna bother people and you're worried about that. Yeah, it makes sense. But the younger they are, the easier I think it is. They really just eat and sleep. So first thing I want to talk about is toys to bring. Since we live in Alaska, whenever we fly somewhere, it takes a long time to get there. So all of the flights we've been on have been pretty long. And so a lot of times we have bought her her own plane seat. And I know that's like really expensive and sometimes you might not want to do that. That's totally fine. But when we do buy her her own plane seat, we bring her car seat on the plane because it is airline certified. You need to make sure it is first. And on her car seat, we love to put her fox. I've talked about it before in another video. That thing has saved our lives. She loves that thing. We also put on the Love Every links, which are really fun. Uh, one of them rattles, one of them crinkles, and one of them squeaks. She still can't squeak it herself right now, but that squeaky one distracts her every time when she's crying. Other than that, we bring along a few of her other Love Every toys depending on what age she is. If you don't know what Love Every is, I've talked about it before in my videos. It's a subscription service. Every couple months they deliver toys based on your baby's age and those are always her favorite toys because they are kind of designed specifically for where she is in her development. One of our favorite ones to pack is from the three to four month box. It's a little crinkle book and it has lots of different sensory things that she can feel with with her hands and uh, pictures to look at. And the links I just mentioned were in her very first box and she still plays with those even at six months. The box comes with all the toys and gives you suggestions on ways to play with the toys and other activities you can do with your baby based on their age. And it's just a really great subscription service, so I highly recommend checking them out. There's a link in my description. We recently had a beach trip with our whole family, and I brought a bunch of my baby's Love Every toys from her five to six month box. There were two babies there that were older than her. One was seven months and one was 10 months, and they both also enjoyed her toys from the five to six month box. So it's not like you get the toys and you can only play with them for two months and then you throw them away. They're useful later on as well. So I highly recommend checking that out. It has definitely made travel easier for us and also has given us ideas of how to play with her at home. So definitely pack toys in your personal item. I usually just make our personal item the diaper bag. And I actually have a diaper bag that I use specifically for travel because it's a backpack and it's, I think it's just easier to take through the airport and security and everything. So I'll link that in the description. It's a very helpful backpack. So what we pack, obviously diapers and wipes. Uh, we pack a change of clothes. And something important that we have found is that you should pack a warm outfit and a cool outfit, no matter what the temperature is outside because planes vary in temperature so much. One time we got on a plane and it was cold, so we had her in like a long sleeve outfit, but the plane was burning hot. Everybody on the plane was sweating and it was awful. She was sweating, she was so uncomfortable, she couldn't sleep. Once we got up in the air, we took her out of that other outfit and luckily we had a cooler outfit in the diaper bag that we can put her in and she finally was able to sleep. Honestly, I was really jealous because I personally was wearing sweatpants and did not have a change of clothes for myself. Burp cloths, pacifiers, I usually make sure that we have like a lot of extra pacifiers before we go on a trip because they can get lost so easily. Um, we use the pacifier clips to clip the pacifier to her outfit because in the airport and on a plane, ugh, there's so many places for a pacifier to fall off and you may never see it again. So we always like to keep those clipped on her clothes. I will also link that in the description. We have a plastic bag or some other sort of bag to put dirty clothes in if she ends up having a blowout and we need to change her outfit. We have what we call her magic blanket. It's her favorite blanket. She loves to have that when she's in her car seat and it helps her sleep. We have an extra really thin blanket just in case. Uh, sometimes we use that blanket to like drape over the car seat. Um, if the lights are going on and off, it helps so that she can stay asleep. Um, also, I've just 
held her before and had the nursing cover over her like most of the time. And a jacket, that's the only other thing I have in here. Oh, also for myself, I like to pack snacks, a phone charger, headphones, um, nipple cream or anything else that you use when you're nursing, which if you're not nursing, you wouldn't need that. If you aren't nursing, you probably also are going to be packing formula and bottles and just make sure that if you aren't breastfeeding and you're using formula to just pack extra, pack an extra bottle, pack, pack extra of all of that because you never know when you're going to get stuck on the runway and you know, the captain's like, oh, we're having this problem or we have to wait and your baby's screaming because she wants to eat. I also highly recommend bringing a second carry-on bag where you can put things just in case you need them but you don't necessarily need them like under the seat in front of you. I'm always worried we're gonna like get stuck in a layover and we're gonna need to spend the night or something like that so just pack enough stuff so that you have like overnight essentials just in case. So in that we pack extra diapers and wipes, we pack a few extra clothes for her, anything else that we might need if we get stuck. One thing that I'm going to start doing that I have not done yet is bring one extra outfit for me and one extra outfit for Gray. There has been a few times, not while we're traveling thankfully, but other times when she has had a blowout and it's gotten all over me or all over Gray and we have needed a spare outfit. So that's something that we're going to start doing is that in our carry-on that we bring on the plane, just have a separate outfit for us, just in case. It doesn't necessarily need to be in our personal item under the seat in front of us, but if we really, really need it, it's there in the overhead bin. I mentioned before, we sometimes buy our baby a seat if it's going to be a really long flight, just because it's easier, and then we can have me in a seat, Gray in a seat, and our baby in a seat, and we fill up the whole row. We don't have to bother anybody. If you are bringing your own car seat, make sure that car seat is airline approved. It should have like a little airplane on it in a circle just look around the car seat. I also think you can just like look up the model and there's a list of them and just know that your baby doesn't have to sit in it. Uh, a lot of times she's not sitting in her car seat. She's nursing or she wants to play with me or with Gray and she needs that comfort but sometimes we're on long red-eye flights and she'll fall asleep and I can kind of transfer her into her car seat and it helps a lot because then I can sleep a lot more comfortably if she's secure in a car seat. If you are not bringing your own car seat, I know that some planes have bassinets where you can sit in that bassinet seat and it pulls out and you can use that during your flight. Yeah, we never used them, but I know that that's a thing, so check and make sure and see if your plane has that and you can request those seats. If you don't have a seat for your baby, obviously you're gonna be keeping her on your lap I would recommend having an aisle seat in that case because sometimes you're going to want to stand up with your baby. Sometimes you're going to need to go use the changing table in the bathroom. When you go on flights, you always see like the dad walking up and down the aisles with the baby because like that's the only way the baby will chill is if they're being walked up and down the aisle. Sometimes the airline will still let you bring on a car seat if there's no one else in your row. So one time we did not book a seat for our daughter because we were only going on a two hour flight but there was nobody sitting in like the window seat or something so uh, I went up and asked the gate agent and said hey can we bring our car seat on board they looked up my seat and they said yeah there's no one sitting there go ahead and bring the seat on our flight's not full so just know that that's an option too one other thing about car seats that I actually did not know when I was first planning our travel is that you can usually check them for free every airline that I've been on has allowed you to check a car seat for free and a stroller for free if you're flying with a baby. The baby doesn't even need to have their own seat. As long as you have a baby with you, you're allowed to check a car seat and a stroller for free. And we usually um, check them at the gate. It's just nice to have through the airport. So we roll her around in the stroller and then when we get to the gate, we check that. And you can grab that right when you get off the plane instead of having to go all the way to baggage claim and picking that up, which is really nice. So I breastfeed and I can't really give that much advice about if you are bottle feeding, but I will say that breastfeeding is so incredibly convenient on a plane. I know that some people, when they are going to be breastfeeding in public, they get a little nervous about that and they wanna have a bottle in case for the plane. I think it's just so much easier to just not worry about that and breastfeed 
you can do it however you want, but not having to worry about a bottle and filling that up and trying to take breast milk through security, which you can do, by the way. Um, I just think it's easier just to straight up feed her from the breast. I know that not everyone can do that and that's fine, but if you have that option, I would highly recommend doing that. And honestly, when you're on a plane, there's not that many people looking at you. People can't really see what you're doing. So if you're worried about like the privacy of breastfeeding, the only people that would be able to see you is the people in your row. I don't even use the nursing cover most of the time for that reason, um, but obviously pack a nursing cover if you are worried about that. We would like to try to make it so that we are feeding our daughter on the way up and on the way down because it helps with her ears. Now, I know that's a tip everywhere, everywhere. But one thing I would like to say is don't worry too hard about that. I feel like that's like the number one thing that people are stressing about. They're trying to time it perfectly so that their baby is ready to eat on takeoff. If your baby is screaming in the airport before you get on the flight, just feed her then and then feed her again at takeoff. I actually haven't really faced a time except for when she was sound asleep where she did not just take to the breast and start eating if I offered it to her. If you get on the plane and you're stuck waiting and you're like, oh my goodness, like I'm not gonna time it right, just feed her. Like it's not that big of a deal. Um, if you have just fed her and you're about to take off, you can also try to give her the pacifier and that can help with the ears too. You really don't need to stick to a feeding schedule when you're traveling. Remember that when you're in the air, that's dehydrating. And so maybe your baby will wanna eat more than she normally does. And sometimes your baby might fall asleep earlier than they normally do. I've seen a lot of videos like this where people are saying, you need to try to time your flight so it's during your baby's nap time. And it's just like, you have no idea what they're going to do, right? Sometimes babies get really excited when they go on a plane. They wanna look at everything and maybe they're not gonna to go to sleep because they're so excited and seeing everything. And then maybe sometimes they get extra tired because there's been all this traveling and there's so much going on. So just like give your baby a break, try to follow their cues on when they're hungry and when they're tired and don't try to stick to your normal schedule. I know that's crazy. Like some people are like cringing right now. They're like, no, you need to stick to a schedule. But like there's so many factors and you don't know how your baby's going to be impacted by traveling. So in my experience, it's just been easier to Feed her when she's hungry, when she asks for it, let her sleep when she needs to, and we just want a happy baby, right? We don't want to try to keep her on a schedule just to keep her on a schedule. She's just happier that way, she's not crying, it doesn't bother anybody else, and it works good. Also in my experience, the jet lag, we have a four hour time difference when we go from Alaska to the east coast of the United States. It is harder for us to adjust the, to the jet lag than it is for our baby. She sleeps enough that it doesn't really affect her as much as it affects us. So don't worry too much about that and trying to get that to work. It might take you a day, but you'll get back on a schedule. Oh, also just a really random tip. If you're looking for another distraction, our baby loves the little safety information cards and the seat backs. She, she loves those. It's like her favorite treat that she's on a plane, she gets to play with that. And she, she will be entertained by that for way longer than you would expect. <laughs> okay, so these next tips are about changing your baby on a plane. Not every bathroom on the plane is going to have a changing table, so just ask your flight attendant which bathroom has a changing table in it because you don't wanna just like stand in line for the bathroom and once you get in there, there's no changing table. And you guys know how small airplane bathrooms are. They are super, super cramped. I actually have never changed my daughter while I've been in a bathroom um, on the airplane. My husband has done it every time. I'm very thankful to not have to have done that. But he's found it easier to grab a white pack and one diaper and walk into the bathroom with that on the plane instead of having to lug the whole um, diaper backpack because it's just such a small cramped space and you, every time you move the backpack's gonna be hitting things. So that is one tip from him, just bring in what you need to. A lot of people say that you should sit in the back of the plane when you have a baby because there's more room for you to stand up with the baby in the back of the plane if you need to move around. That's a great idea and keep that in mind. But another thing that you need to keep in mind is that being in the back is closer to the bathrooms, which is helpful if you need to change a baby a lot. But one thing that's very annoying about being by the bathrooms is the toilet flushing. When my baby is trying to sleep and we're on a really long red eye flight, the toilet flushing will wake her up every single time. 
So we have actually started to move our seats farther up, like five rows away from the bathrooms or so, because uh, they always wake her up and she always gets mad when the toilet flushes. Then I always have to take her out of her car seat, feed her again, calm her down or something, and then put her back in. So just keep that in mind. If you're having a longer flight, you might not wanna be right up next to the bathroom. I know it's really stressful flying with baby and worrying about bothering other people, but really you don't need to worry about that. Most people are not judging you and they don't care. Tons of people on the plane have been parents themselves and they know what it's like traveling with a baby. And the people who do care, who cares? Like you're allowed to be there, your baby's allowed to be there and it's fine. I actually have not run into any mean person on a plane yet, which is very surprising by the amount of plane flights we've been on. Everybody that we have run into has been really nice and understanding about our daughter. She also has been pretty good on planes. We've only had a few meltdowns here and there. And I think that's all I have. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And anyone else who has some advice about flying with young babies, leave that in the comments too. We can help each other out. And thanks so much for watching. And I hope that if you're flying with a baby, that it goes smoothly. Subscribe if you want. Yeah, that's all. Bye.